Can you believe it? We're getting a huge OLED upgrade to the Corsair Xenion. I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. I can't remember. OLED 27 inch 240 hertz monitor. All you need to know is yes, it's a great 240 hertz super fast W OLED gaming monitor. And there was a lot of things to like about it when I originally reviewed it. I mean, it has HDMI 2.1 and overall, I just felt like the connectivity and stand itself was probably the best option out there. But when it came to brightness, uh-oh, it wasn't too good. Yeah, it was definitely far below some of the other options on the market, especially when compared to the Asus alternative, although at the time that definitely was more expensive. Now things have changed in terms of pricing and it's going to change day by day, but still typically the Corsair monitor is a lot cheaper, but here's the good news, guys. Pay attention because they just dropped an update which allegedly increased the brightness by 33%. That is a massive improvement to the brightness overall. So I decided, you know, I'm going to reach out to Corsair, figure out whether or not this is true or if they're just yanking my chain. So I did just that. They sent it over. I got to testing and the great news is, yes, there is a 33% brightness increase allowing the full screen window to reach over 200 nits now in fact i think i measured as much as 216 nits which is pretty dang good for full screen for any oled let alone an oled monitor so very good stuff there but it comes with a catch because of course it does Nothing in this world can be good, huh? We just can't have nice things. And that catch is you have to have brightness stabilizer on. Now, normally if this was a work monitor, I'd be like, you know what? That's not a problem whatsoever. But to be realistic with you guys, these monitors I would consider to be pretty bad for working on. I mean, yeah, you can do it, but the text clarity is quite frankly, absolutely atrocious. Not only do you have the extra white sub pixel which is gonna make things look definitely a lot worse, but it's also 1440p, which is fine, but I'll definitely say that 4K is better suited for professional work long-term. And then on top of all that, it has a very, very yucky, grainy matte filter that it's honestly on these OLEDs probably the worst I've ever seen. It's not just Corsair's fault, it's every single one of these W OLEDs has honestly the worst matte finish I have ever seen in my life. They look absolutely awful and i thank god i figured out how to buff these things out but yeah if you don't do it it's gonna look pretty grainy and i definitely would not want to be working on this for a long period of time so with that in mind the brightness stabilizer option to me seems like it doesn't really make sense because sure the full screen can get brighter but if you do any type of content that has not the entire screen being white you will immediately notice that yes the brightness stabilizer on is actually far far dimmer than the brightness stabilizer off you can see here i'm showing you a couple of examples but also even in gaming you will definitely notice this the most whereas you know take a look at this baldur's gate 3 footage i have it actually looks really bad with brightness stabilizer on, looks really good with it off. So although it could be maybe less irritating to not have the ABL or automatic brightness limiter kicking in all the time, honestly, I just can't recommend using the brightness stabilizer on basically ever for any of these panels as they're just not gonna be good work panels anyway. It doesn't make any sense and it's gonna make the picture look a lot, lot worse. So. Yeah, unfortunately, this does not apply to when you have it off. And so I'd like to see in the future Corsair bring this to the brightness stabilizer off mode, bring those brightness enhancements, because unfortunately, when it's off, yes, you are going to be stuck still with that like 140 to 150 nits of full screen brightness, which is far below some other options, including that KTC one I recently reviewed, which is also far cheaper. So yes, the Corsair one has no firmware issues and it also has HDMI 2.1, an important factor for NVIDIA users who will have DSC issues. But if you're willing to deal with any firmware problems that hopefully get ironed out soon, the KTC is much brighter and also much cheaper. So it does get kind of hard to recommend this Corsair one unless it also falls to a similar price as then you're trading blows between features and panel performance. So hopefully this does get brought to the stabilizer off mode in the future, but as for now, it is still good to see that they are making improvements to this monitor, and I'll keep an eye out to see 
if it gets improved any further. Whether you're looking to connect a new console, gaming PC, or just need a fast and reliable HDMI cable to connect over long distances, Rupro has you covered with their certified 8K HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cable available in sizes of up to 50 feet and can deliver a perfect full 48 gigabits per second connection over distances other cables could only dream of reaching. And with 48 gigabits per second of bandwidth, it can easily drive 8K 60 FPS or 4K 144 FPS 10-bit HDR video through its ultra thin, flexible, and durable housing, and it even supports ER. So if you're in the market for a cable that can drive a beautiful new TV or monitor, be sure to check out RuPro on Amazon today.